Am I the a-hole for throwing out my brother-in-law's fiance and saying her comment was out of line? I'll start by telling the background story for what happened to my wife and where this left us so my post makes sense. Some years ago, my wife was injured at her job. My wife didn't cause the situation, but she was the one who was injured, and she lost a limb as a result. Her company was investigated under OHSA, and there was also legal trouble for them because there were major safety violations that led to what happened to my wife. We took the money my wife received in the aftermath to purchase a home, and with the bit that was left over, we invested for our retirement as my wife and I were in our 30s when it happened. We are comfortable having no mortgage, no debt and having our savings, but we aren't living like we have a bottomless pit. Our house isn't a mansion, our vehicles are used, we don't have expensive clothing or unlimited vacations. Both of us still work part-time because we want to keep our resumes current, as we don't want to rely solely on the money from what happened to my wife because that is our nest egg. And frankly, we both need something to do besides be at home. What happened to my wife was traumatic beyond any words I have. I love my wife exactly how she is. But both of us agree that we would trade our house the nest egg for our old shoebox studio apartment and the debt we had before, if it meant my wife could go back to how she was before the injury. The money we got was not from something happy. Also, we have never bragged or flaunted our money at anyone. Everyone knows why my wife got that money. There was no way to hide her injury, hospital stay, and rehabilitation, but we don't talk about it to anyone, even though it happened is public. My wife's brother got engaged, and we had the two of them over for dinner and drinks. And his fiancé had a gall to tell my wife, and me, how lucky she was to have the accident because it got her money to be able to afford a house in an expensive market. She further told her she would gladly chop off her own limb, the same limb my wife was missing, to have a free house and to not have to go to work every day. I told her to leave my house because her comment was so out of line to me. My brother-in-law got mad at me for sticking my nose in a family argument, and later I got an angry call from my in-laws because he told them I threw them out. He did not tell them why, but when I repeated his comment, they said the same thing my brother-in-law said, which is that she was probably just nervous and not thinking straight. In that sense, affording a house here was impossible, her envy is understandable. My brother-in-law wants me to apologize. The only one of my in-laws who wasn't mad at me is my wife's oldest brother. My wife has two brothers, and birth order's oldest brother, engaged brother, and my wife. So, was I the a-hall for getting involved in my wife's familial dispute? Normally, I would never, but in the heat of the moment, I saw red. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hall. The dispute did involve you. We see so many posts on here where the verdict goes the other way because a partner didn't step up to defend the other. You love your wife, and you're both very realistic about what transpired. What the fiancé said was tacky, disrespectful, and likely cruel. Honestly, I'm currently not working because of an injury, and I've had so many people say, must be nice. And it's like, oh yeah, it's so nice being in constant pain and needing pain medicine to have any chance at sleep. I'd love and give anything to be a physically normal human again that has to go to work. I choose that over what my injured life is any day. I agree. I have a chronic pain condition and I hate when people say it must be nice not to work. I always say I wish I was well enough to work. Not today, home. She was incredibly ableist. Sadly, disabled people have to deal with people like her on a daily basis. Thank you for easing that burden. Your in-laws are full of BS. This is not a family matter, and if it is, you are family. You were defending your wife from a cruel person, and I'm sure she's glad you did. Agreed. Plus, if he isn't family, then who is the fiancé to get involved with this? She isn't even married into the family yet. Not today, Hull, and I would never allow her into my home again. Do not apologize. You did nothing wrong. Next story. Am I the a Hull for calling my sister a crazy, delusional woman? My wife thinks I should have handled the situation more diplomatically. My wife, Leah, has a few visible tattoos on her arm and many others that aren't quite seen when she's in regular clothes. She's far from a full sleeve, but she likes them It has many plans to get more in the future. My sister, Katie, called me in the early morning, distraught and frantic, begging me to watch her son, Six, and her daughter, Four, for the weekend. 
I said yes right away and she dropped off her children and left. To be honest, I thought that I would be the last person Katie would call in an emergency. Katie hates Leah. Not for any justifiable reason, but because Leah has thug tattoos, as she describes. Katie believes that a woman with tattoos is a cheap woman and will only corrupt a good home. Of course, because of these comments, I choose not to speak to my sister often. Leah and I took my niece and nephew to the playground, where my nephew fell and scraped his knee a little. As expected, he was in tears for a few minutes. But Leah cheered him up, played with him, and placed a Hello Kitty Band-Aid on a cut. It was a very small accident. When Katie came to pick them up, the first thing that she noticed was the Band-Aid covering my nephew's knee. She immediately stormed over to Leah, who was bringing over some tea for Katie, and accused her of deliberately hurting her child. Leah was very confused, and I tried to explain the manner in which my nephew got a Band-Aid. But Katie wasn't listening. She kept blaming Leah, and only Leah, for not taking better care of her children. Things began to quickly escalate. Leah was trying to get Katie's kids to pack their things so that they could get out of there as fast as possible. But Katie kept threatening to call the police on Leah, accusing her of very serious crimes. At the moment, it didn't look like these were empty threats either. She was fishing in her purse for her phone and Leah and I were confused, but worried. At this point, I was getting fed up. I essentially yelled at Katie to stop acting like a crazy delusional person and leave my house at once. She was upset but left five minutes later. Of course, Leah is happy that I did that, but wishes I didn't yell, especially in front of the children. My family has taken Katie's side as it's only a mother's instinct to want to protect her children. Not stay home. Now you know how your whole family stands. What did your nephew need protection from? Gravity? Nah, my wife turned herself invisible and pushed the kid over. He needs a full bodysuit to protect himself from the deadly attacks of my wife. But if she's invisible, nobody can see her evil, evil tattoos. Are you sure it wasn't witchcraft? Not stay home. I think that needs to be the last favor you do for Katie. Maybe even the last time you speak to her. What she threatened is incredibly serious. Obviously, there was no fault on your wife's part or yours, but depending on what industry your wife works in, even the slightest rumor of those allegations can be damaging, especially if your other family's backing your sister's false claims. Also, it may be a mother's instinct to protect her children, but it is also a husband's wife's instinct to protect their spouse. So you had just as much of a reason to yell. My guess is that your family is also not a fan of your wife and has no problem with anything that could cause problems for her or your relationship. Yeah, I think I've realized that I can never interact with my niece and nephew again, no matter how big the emergency. Just wait until they are old enough and reach out then. I've seen where people set up email boxes for their kids and write them notes on birthdays, holidays, special occasions. Then they give them to log in when they turn 18. You could do something like that if you want a way to show them when they are older that you always wanted a relationship with them. Not stay home. Tell the rest of your family that they need to get a reality check. Katie was harassing your wife for no justifiable reason. Good on you for defending her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for expecting my sister to reimburse me for my son's suit? I, 38 male, am a father of two boys. Andrew, 14 male, and Marshall, 12 male. Yesterday, my parents held an Easter gathering at their house. Me, my parents, and my four siblings and their kids were all invited. Marshall told me that he was planning on wearing what he wore to church to my parents' place, a suit and tie. My wife and I reminded Marshall that everyone was going to be dressed more casually, but he said he didn't care. I wasn't too surprised because Marshall has always been kind of a sharp dresser. All of my siblings and their kids were there when we arrived, including my sister, Sarah, 44 female, who I never really got along with. Her twins, both 16 male and daughter, 14 female, were also there. Sarah spoils her kids rotten, and they've always been super bratty because of that. Every family gathering, they've always been pretty rude to their cousins, and they always act super entitled. And surprisingly, Sarah's kids were relentlessly picking on Marshall for choosing to wear a suit when almost everyone else was dressed more casually. I could tell it really bothered Marshall, but he did his best to not let it get to his head. He did his best to ignore them and he just hung out with Andrew and his cousins that he gets along with. 
At around 4.30, we all gathered for dinner outside. Sarah's kids kept picking on all of their cousins the whole time, but especially Marshall because of his choice to wear a suit. Again, he did his best to ignore them, but I still felt really bad. For dessert, my mom made strawberry and chocolate milkshakes for everyone in two large blenders that she had. When everyone there was done, there was still about a half blender of chocolate milkshake and a quarter blender of strawberry. Sarah's kids decided it would be funny to dump them on Marshall and ruin his suit, so that's exactly what they did. Poor Marshall was super embarrassed afterwards and ran away crying. My wife went to go chase him and calm him down. I had enough at that point, so I grabbed Andrew and left. I sent Sarah the dry cleaning bill and told her that I am expecting her to pay it, and that if the dry cleaners can't fix Marshall's suit, then she will have to reimburse me for the suit, along with a dress shirt and tie, as well, because she acted like it was no big deal that her kids decided to bully Marshall for no reason. She then told me that she doesn't think that she should have to reimburse me, and that I'm a terrible father for having my son wear a suit to a casual gathering. I blew about her telling her that she has no business in saying how my son should dress, and that she needs to learn how to discipline her bratty teenagers, and that she needs to stop spoiling them. I do feel like that may have been uncalled for. My parents and all of my other siblings are all on my side believing that Sarah should reimburse me, but they do believe that I should have had Marshall dress more casually. I disagree though, because there's nothing wrong with Marshall wanting to look his best. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not day home. Marshall wasn't dressed inappropriately. It was a family party on a major holiday, not a hike through the Grand Canyon. His cousins ruined his clothes on purpose. It wasn't an accident. They wanted to embarrass him and mess up his clothes. Their parents absolutely should pay to fix the problem. And if they were decent parents, they would make their kids earn back every cent. Yep, it would be different if the suit got ruined playing outside. That would be Marshall's fault for wearing a suit, but playing like he was in normal clothes. He didn't. He took care of the suit and didn't affect anyone. The cousins deliberately ruined it. If those teenagers were mine, they would be paying for the suit and getting lectures for being bullies. Yeah, these brats did this out of meanness, not because they felt the suit was inappropriate for a casual gathering. Even if he was wearing gym clothes, their behavior would still be completely off the charts and acceptable. Not stay home. It doesn't matter what Marshall was wearing. Although in an ideal world, she'd take a step back and ask herself if she really wants to insinuate that he was asking for it based on how he was dressed. Her kids deliberately wrecked his clothes. She needs to take responsibility for that. Edit. Everyone sucks here except for Marshall. Parents too weak to intervene and just let 16-year-old bullies pick on a 12-year-old that just wanted to look nice. Shaking my head, it must suck to be Marshall and feel abandoned to his tormentors. Your sister sucks and so do her kids. Poor Marshall. Info, did you just look at two 16-year-old bull your 12-year-old without intervening? I am confused as to how the situation escalated and why it feels like nobody said anything. Exactly. That is what I just commented. What a toxic failure the OP wife and grandparents are as well. To just allow them to do this. That crap would not fly in my mother's house. At all. Edit. I'm not gonna leave any more comments for now, but thank you all for commenting. I saw a lot of comments saying how I should have directly intervened more and prevented a bullying which I have failed to do. So my wife and I apologize to Marshall for that. I'm also going to teach both Andrew and Marshall how to defend themselves if something like this happens again. I have also told my parents and all of my other siblings that I will not be attending any more family gatherings if Sarah and her kids are invited. That is, until she pays for the suit and her kids' behavior improves. I'm also probably going to go no contact with her for a while. Now, for the last story, am I the a-hole for refusing an apology from a kid that used to bully me? I-13 male got bullied from ages 6 to 9 by a kid, now 15. Let's call him Alex. Alex bullied a lot of kids, but he did it to me the most. When I was 7, my sister lost the battle with cancer and passed away. Me and my parents were very sad about it, but Alex decided it was a good reason to torment me even more. He would constantly say that it was my fault my sister passed away and things like that. When I was 9, I got taller so I wasn't an easy target anymore, and so the bullying stopped. 
Four years later, when I was with a friend at a train station, I saw Alex again, and he came up to me saying that he wanted to apologize about what he did to me. I said that I can't forgive someone who bullied me about my sister's death. He then denied the fact that he bullied me about that and asked me why I made it up. A friend said that he shouldn't lie and that everyone from our old class knows that Alex did that. He then got very mad and shouted at me saying that he didn't do that and that he was the victim. I then said that he can F off and that I will never forgive him for what he has done. Alex then ran away crying of rage and humiliation. Since everyone at a train station was looking at him, Alex's mother scolded me and said that I shouldn't be so harsh and that Alex can't help it because he has anger issues. I told her that having anger issues isn't an excuse to torment someone about losing their sister. She then got upset and ran to Alex, still with tears in his eyes. So, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You're not required to accept an apology. Forgive and forget culture protects abusers, but doesn't do much for the victims. I also thought that. Thanks for letting me know. Best you could have done was acknowledge the apology but you aren't required to accept it. Honestly, it doesn't sound like he was really apologizing. Maybe his mother was forcing him too. And maybe he will get in trouble for not getting you to forgive him. But that is not your problem to deal with. It's not your job to protect him from the consequences of his own actions. Not they home. Screw that kid. That's what I thought. Not they home. I was bullied too. And I told one of mine years later that I hope the guilt of what he did haunts him for life. But they should learn that saying sorry doesn't fix what they did. But if any victim forgives their tormentors, more power to them though. I'm sorry that you've also been bullied. Thanks for letting me know. I hope you're doing better now. I was bullied all the way through school. And it still affects me now as an adult with two grown children. I've never received an apology from any of my bullies. And quite frankly, I don't want one. I live 500 miles away from the place where I grew up and I just keep in touch with the people I want to keep in touch with. One of my boys passed away a few years ago and another one passed away last year. I expressed my condolences on Facebook for their families on a memorial page for students who have passed away from my high school. And I was sincere about it because their families were hurting and I'm not a cold-hearted person. But I didn't shed any tears for them either.